I swear to you that I've been trying to avoid making this video, and I definitely apologize about the landscaping going on in the background, but everybody's talking about it, so I figured I'm going to go ahead and drop off my two cents about the uh, about King Vaughn. Um, about King Vaughn and everybody now finally coming to a suggestion or a conclusion. There's no physical proof now that was not present when he was alive and he's dead so he would never be able to be convicted for the crime of having FBG Duck uh, murdered essentially so uh, a lot of people are just now coming to an understanding or a, a, a shared sentiment that King Von actually put a hit out on FBG Duck for $100,000 and um, that once the mission was accomplished or FBG Duck was taken away, tragically, then <clears throat> basically they were compensated for, for the hit that was taken care of. This uh, belief is bolstered by the video that went famous back in the day of King Von returning to the hood with a hundred thousand dollars and a big old duffel bag and a bunch of O block chains for everybody who was there in the video and he takes it down, he dumps it on the table, and he breaks off a little piece, gives it this guy, gives it this guy, that guy, this guy, that guy. And basically a lot of those people in the video, um, most of them, if I'm not mistaken, are now arrested uh due to conspiracy of the murder of King Vaughn and I mean King Vaughn, pardon me, FBG Duck. Um, so a lot of people are basically convinced that if King Vaughn was still here, he would be in prison for the FBG Duck situation as well. Um, and basically a lot of people, uh, you know, are, I, I guess, based off of that, coming to the conclusion that King Vaughn was, for lack of a better term, a treacherous demon. I don't even know how else to ex explain it. King Vaughn, since his passing, you know, since everybody left, since the stardust has left everybody's eyes from him being able to put words that rhyme together in a uh, entertaining fashion, they've come to identify him as a essentially a serial killer. Um, DJ Academics has made a lot of uh, videos on the topic as well as other YouTubers and I consumed a lot of that a lot of that media and yeah I mean I kind of yes like he was a person who that was what he was used to living like and it's very interesting when we talk about uh, King Von's situation because it's not often that a serial killer <laughs> is very close to anyone. Oftentimes you'll hear about them being distant from people around them. And um, a lot of the people who are closest to them, they're just very well concealed. They're always like, oh, he was such a nice guy. I would have never known, da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying? But in the example of King Von, we have a lot of people who are around him in the, uh, you know, in his gang members ever since he was young and impressionable, who can give at least slight accounts as to the things that he had gone through that made him into the person that he is. Um, that's, you know, that, that you're never going to get his perspective on it and you'll never get the full story about it because there's always going to be concealment from the friends and people who really want to speak respectfully on his name than just air out any type of dirty laundry. But from the very small amount of information that I know about King Vaughn, it was that he was outside at a very, very young age because he didn't have anybody. He didn't have any family to go home to. If I'm, if somebody from Chicago personally knows his story better than me, trust me, I would listen to your authority over that. But from what I've seen, he had an extreme, like rougher than most of the kids, even in his area. And that is what made him worse than most of the kids in his area. He did not have loved ones around him. Um, and when you look at a lot of the people who are the toughest of 
a section, a gang, any type of organization, or just in general in life, oftentimes a lot of trauma has caused them to feel the need to portray themselves in this way. And that is not to take to fully take the blame away from them, but human beings are conditioned into becoming things like King Vaughn often, often, especially the sane ones, because I don't necessarily know if King Vaughn was insane. Mentally ill, unquestionably. You can't murder a bunch of people without being mentally ill, but insane is different. King Vaughn actually seemed very sane. Sane to the point of cold calculation that people actually thought of him as an actual demon because they didn't understand how a human could do these kind of things. That's a little different than an incoherent madman, you know, choosing to like randomly attack somebody on the subway or even random serial killings. Like these are still, he's a serial killer in the numbers, but these were still in an organized fashion and these were for certain incentives, whether to eliminate an opposing team member who could potentially kill one of his friends or for economic incentive. So it's not like he did it for no reason. But it's not an excuse to do that or to live that way. And it's definitely not an excuse for anybody to look up to those kind of behaviors, as a matter of fact. You know, I listen to RXK Nephew, one of my... Uh, one of my higher up there, recent acts in hip hop. Um, and he talks all the time. I mean, his so his recent uh, Make an Example track that he did with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Brandon Cumming Cunningham and the other dude whose name I don't know. It's like dog something or something. Um, you know, he talks, he has a whole like three minute section where he just does his little, he, if you don't know RxK Nephew, he always has a little section where he just like says a, a dude's name a bunch of times and like goes in, like makes different bars about that person. He's done it about Lil Reese, DJ Academics, uh, Biggie, Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> um, so, but this time it was, it was about uh, King Vaughn. Well, no, it was about Lil Tim. And he said that, yeah, I, you know, I, everybody needs a Lil Tim. Every big shout out to Lil Tim. I bet you that Lil Dirk wish he had a Lil Tim. And he said, I don't think he said Lil Dirk, but he said, list. Listed off a bunch of people. PNB Rock wishes he had a little Tim. And I like when people do something that's against the norm, the traditional narrative in that way. Um, I understand that it involves, you know, kind of dissing other people and, and things like that. But at the same time, I think that it's tasteful and I think it's artistic. But I think that... Um, he points out a very good important message about Lil Tim. Lil Tim was vilified because he killed King Von, who's a person who people like, but he was really only just protecting his friend. Everybody would like to be that friend and everybody would like to have that friend in that scenario. Nobody can truly be mad at Lil Tim for what he did. We can say that he acted quickly, but to be honest with you, if I saw somebody who I know killed multiple people, allegedly, and he was approaching my friend who said he was going to do something to when he saw him, allegedly, I would, in my mind, be thinking of de-escalation, uh, extreme de-escalation measures. And if I had a weapon on me, guess what? I would be utilizing that in order to do such, allegedly. But I say all this to say, swinging back to King Vaughn as a person, um, we cannot, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's sad what's going on with those youth in Chicago, because it is, but I'm not the dude to spit off those platitudes. You know me, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to sit here and tell you the way the world should be. I'm going to talk about the way the world is, and I'm going to talk about why it is that way, and if you use that information to make better choices for yourself, then that's cool, and if you don't, then that's also your decision to make. But right now, I think the lesson to be learned from this is regardless of where you're raised, regardless of who you're raised by, it's always important to make sure that you're able to control your mental health and your emotional well-being. And even further than that, being unhappy is not an excuse to make others unhappy. Being unhappy is something that you have to deal with internally, and you really shouldn't look for external sources of happiness. Um, you can do things to help improve your happiness, achieve things, accomplish things. But looking to the outer world 
for happiness is an expectation that is false. That unfortunately a lot of us have because of what is taught to us in our youth, especially in the United States of America. The pursuit of happiness. It's okay to pursue happiness, but happiness is a fleeting feeling. And reaching mental and emotional balance is far more important than being happy all of the time. Because being happy all the time is not going to save you from being sad. Ever. Experiencing sadness in a healthy fashion and understanding how to analyze your own emotions and gain from them is the only way that we can put ourselves in better position as individuals. And for the black community to raise ourselves out of impoverishment and unfavorable conditions that create and generate human beings like King Vaughn, it starts with controlling ourselves and building a better culture. That's what I try to do over here. So let me know if I'm doing a good job or not. I'm sure you will, you always do. Have a great morning.